You know, there are a lot of Polish jokes out there, but this sausage is nothing to laugh at. Today I'm gonna to be walking you through our smoked Polish sausage making kit. The beauty about the kits that we sell like this is it has everything you need all in one box. The seasoning, the cure, and the casings to make a really delicious sausage. Basically, it comes with everything but the meat. Let's open it up and let me show you what I mean. Here we have the seasoning packet. This is enough for 25 pounds of sausage. We have our cure. And then we also have our natural hog casings. We are gonna to need to rinse and soak these and we'll get to that in a minute. So we have here everything we need to start making sausage except for our meat, which I'm gonna to get to next. Polish sausage or kielbasa is a sausage that is usually made up of pork or a blend of pork and beef. Today we're gonna to be making a blend and we're gonna go for about 60% pork, 40% beef. I'm gonna be using a pork butt, which is bone in, so I'm gonna to have to take that bone out first. And then for the beef, we're using a standard chuck roast, which is also very common in sausage making. I really like using pork butt in my sausage for a number of reasons. The fat content and the fat ratio, protein to fat, is really good, and it works well with sausage. It's also a really easy cut to find in the supermarket. It's often on sale, so I like to grab one or two and throw them in my freezer until I'm ready to make sausage. You can also use things like pork trim. If you have a local butcher that can get something for you like that, you can use pork belly. There are lots of options out there, but for me, pork butt is the best and easiest way to go. This is a bone-in cut, so what I have to do is I have to get that bone out of there before we go to the grinder, so that's what I'm gonna work on now. I do have a cut glove on here when I'm deboning. I like doing that when I'm deboning meat just because a knife slippage can really hurt and it can cost you a lot more money in stitches. And this is gonna get cut up into smaller pieces that are gonna go into a grinder. So if you wanna just cut hunks off until you get down to that bone, that works well too. It's not like you need to preserve a big old piece of the meat for any reason. And as I go through here as well, I'm gonna be trimming off any bloodline or veins that are just not gonna go well in our sausage. Now that I've got all the meat off the bone, I'm just gonna break these down into smaller pieces so that they fit better into the grinder so that we're not forcing anything through the, uh, through the auger. We don't want the grinder to work harder than it has to. And now we're gonna cut up our chuck roast in the same way, some grinder appropriately sized pieces. You can see in this chuck roast, the marbling and all the fat content in here, that's gonna be really nice to keep the moisture and give us some really good flavor in the Polish sausage. Now that we've got our meat block all cut up and ready for the grinder, I'm gonna set this in the freezer for about 20 minutes to half an hour before I grind. That is gonna get a really good chill on our meat so that we don't have any smearing of the fat, which would be the fat breaking down before we want it to. In the meantime, I'm gonna get our grinder set up and I'm gonna measure these out for our batch size. Our Polish sausage kit comes with everything you need for a 25 pound batch of sausage. This isn't gonna be a full 25 pounds that we're making today, so I'm gonna to need to break these down to appropriately season the amount of meat we do have. We're gonna to need to rinse all that salt off and get them soaking in some lukewarm water. What this is gonna do is it's gonna make the casings more pliable and easier to work with once we're on our stuffer. I'm gonna load our meat into the hopper here. And I'm gonna mix the, the pork and the beef together because it's all gonna get ground together, it's all gonna get mixed together, it's all going in the same place so it can all be ground together. I am starting this grind with a 3 8 inch plate and this is gonna be a pretty standard grind process starting with the 3 8 then we're gonna be moving to the finer 3 16 size plate. So I'm gonna take our pre-measured seasoning and just add it right in there. Now I'm not gonna over mix it here because I don't wanna start any protein extraction, but I'm gonna get the seasoning and the cure right in here and just fold it all together to start distributing that seasoning throughout the meat. This is actually one of my favorite parts because you get the sense of the seasoning and you kind of get that first glimpse of what you're making. All right, I'm gonna change our plate to the 316s and we'll go for our second grind. 
going to load our meat back up into the hopper. And I can feel it's still nice and cold, which is a really good sign. And lastly, I'm going to pass a few ice cubes through our grinder. That's going to push all that leftover meat so we're getting everything out of the grinder that we can. Now, I'm going to add some cold water to our meat block, and then I'm going to start mixing this by hand to get this really well mixed and to start our protein extraction. Once that meat gets really tacky, we know we're going to be ready for the stuffer. So you just got to get in there, use some elbow grease. That's about where we want it. I'm going to mix for another minute or two, but I think we're right about there. I just want to make sure it's nice and evenly mixed. Next, we're going to set up our stuffer. We're going to load the stuffer with our meat block, get our casings loaded on the horn, and we'll be ready to stuff. When I start filling the stuffer, I'm going to add the meat towards the center of the stuffer, push it down so it works its way out towards the walls. That way, we're going to eliminate as many of those air pockets as possible. If there are air pockets in our stuffer, then that's going to go right into our sausage, which is going to make it more complicated to stuff. And then we're going to crank it down just so it starts coming out of the, out of the horn here. And you'll feel it as soon as it makes contact with the meat, and it'll start to come out the horn. And then we're going to push it down about 75%, 80% of the way. And then we're going to back off our pressure. Find the end of your casing. Open it up a little bit, and then kind of pull some water through. And that'll give our casings one final rinse. It'll help us untangle the casing, and it's also going to help lubricate it so it goes onto the horn a lot easier. We're going to use some of this water right here to lubricate the horn so we don't get stuck. And away we go. I've got a good amount of water on the table here too so we don't get any sticking there. We're ready to stuff. So we're just going to hold our hand here evenly and kind of guide the sausage as it comes off of the horn. Now, if we start to see a big air pocket build up there, just take the back of a knife, give it one or two whacks on the horn itself, and that air will dissipate. And for linking, we're going to go about every five to six inches, skip one, and twist. And on the last one, in the other way. All right, so I'm going to take my sausage pricker now that we're all linked up, and I'm just going to kind of eliminate those air pockets and give them a gentle squeeze to work that air out. Again, we don't want any air in here that can lead to some bursting when we're cooking, and we could lose a lot of fat, texture, flavor. So we just want to get rid of all, I should say, as many air pockets as we can. And if you don't have a sausage pricker, you can just use a sharp tip of a knife. Just make sure you don't go too deep because you don't want to completely rupture the casings. Now that all of our sausage is stuffed, I'm going to set this in the cooler overnight. What that's going to do is it's going to help the cure and all those flavors to develop on the meat. So that first thing in the morning, we're going to be ready for the smoker. All right, happy smoking day, everybody. These have been in the cooler for about 24 hours at this point. So we're ready to go into the smoker. So we're going to load these onto our smoke sticks. And all you're going to do is loop every second sausage so that they look something like that. And once they're in the smokehouse, we're going to arrange them so that they have a lot of good air circulation, so that they evenly cook, and we get a really good smoke flavor on all of our sausages. Here we have our final smoked product. It was a bit windy outside when I was smoking, so it took a little longer than expected. But I think everything turned out pretty well, and these look amazing. I started with a preheated smoker at 130 degrees. I hung our sausages on our smoke sticks and put them in the smoker. I inserted a probe, and then I waited until the internal temperature got up to 85 degrees. At that point, I put the sawdust in the smoker to actually start smoking. I did that for about two hours, and then I removed the smoke. Meat and sausage generally picks up the most smoke and the most flavor between the degrees of 85 and 130 degrees. I did that for about an hour, and then I increased the temperature again to 180 degrees. Once we hit 155 degrees internal temperature, 
I pulled the sausage and we put it in a nice bath. This is going to shock the casing so that we get that classic bite and snap that we want, but it's also going to cool the sausage rapidly. After about an hour, I pulled it from the ice bath and I set it in the fridge so it could cool completely overnight. So all I have to do now is unlink these. I'm gonna throw some on the grill and we're finally gonna be ready to try these sausages. All grilled up and I'm gonna serve these with a little bit of sauerkraut and some brown mustard, which is my favorite way to eat sausage. But first I wanna cut these open, see what the texture looks like and give them a taste just by themselves. These look really nice. Got nice even coloration from the cure and the smoke. We can see some fat particles in there, which means it's gonna be nice and moist. So I'm really excited to try these, so I'm just gonna, mm. and Look at that, the bite is great. The snap on the casing is almost perfect, and the texture of the sausage itself is really good. There's plenty of smoke flavor, even though we only smoked for about two hours. And all the flavors, the salts, the little peppery, you can definitely get the paprika in there too. It's a really nice, well-rounded flavor of this sausage. Overall, I'm, I'm floored and ecstatic with how this turned out, and I'm glad that I have a ton of it left to backpack. For our smoked Polish sausage kit and much more, head to psseasoning.com. If you like the video, feel free to click subscribe. Check us out on Instagram. And as always, until next time, I'm Chef Jed. Thanks for watching.